Good evening and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining tonight's webinar and spending the next hour with us as we explore how you can achieve a career in health with JCU. My name is Rebecca Glasgow Maurice and I'm part of the Future Students team here at JCU and I'll be your MC for the evening. I'd like to start by acknowledging the Aboriginal, Australian and Torres Strait Islander peoples as the first inhabitants of this country and pay my respects to the traditional owners and elders past and present of the land on which we stand today. In the spirit of reconciliation, I also acknowledge the valuable contribution that Australian Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples continue to make to James Cook University and the broader community. Now, a little bit of housekeeping before we get started this evening. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the Q&A box in your Zoom control panel, as you can see on the screen now. I'll address these with our speaker at the end of the presentation. Now, talking of our speaker, tonight we're fortunate enough to have the head of JCU Mackay's Clinical School, Elisa Hatherley, who will be exploring the wide range of career options available in the human and animal health industries, as well as, dis as discussing JCU's application-based programs. Elisa is the head of JCU's Mackay Clinical School and provides medical education experience in clinical skills and undergraduate and postgraduate training. She has enjoyed working as a GP and hospital clinician, particularly providing women's health services in the Mackay community for over 20 years. Her vision is to grow regional training for health careers and to develop the health workforce of tomorrow in the community for the community. Please welcome Elisa Hadley. Thank you so much, Beck. And I have to admit, it's actually JCU's vision. It's not my personal vision to grow healthcare uh, opportunities for um, education and for careers uh, across the whole of North Queensland, the rural, regional and remote areas, as well as those tropical areas, all of those areas that are underserved. Uh, and fortunately, give us really great opportunity for careers for those of us who are working in health. I'm really glad to be able to talk to you tonight, joining you from Mackay, uh, where I came as an intern as a doctor more than 20 years ago, uh, having grown up and uh, gone to school and university in metropolitan areas. It was a real pleasure to come to a smaller community like Mackay, which of course is quite a large regional centre, uh, and uh, have found an enormous, uh, enormously varied um, and interesting career in the region. And it's great now to be able to offer those educational opportunities to young people and also mature age students in our region and those who are coming further afield to uh, experience what is going on in uh, Northern Queensland. I'm particularly excited to work for James Cook University because JCU provides uh, that socially responsible uh, vision for healthcare in our region, making sure we are preparing the healthcare professionals for tomorrow who are socially responsible, who advocate for our communities, who are responsive to the needs of our local communities and partnering with our local communities. So it's a great university to attend for those who really have that social conscience and want to be able to give back. The other fantastic opportunity working uh, and living in North Queensland is that whilst you are well prepared for regional, remote and tropical health, you can translate those skills for any of your disciplines back into a metropolitan area or even take those skills overseas if you choose. So James Cook, is a different university offering you adventure and skills and the impact that you might need and that our communities deserve. You might not know that JCU has world-class facilities here in North Queensland and welcome students from a really diverse background of more than a hundred countries. As I was saying, a career in health is a passport to adventure. It might be that you learn your skills and take them to a wide variety of locations across Australia or more broadly across the world. Or you might come to one spot like I have in Mackay and find a great variety of work uh, in your field. There are so many uh, future employment opportunities in health 
And of course, COVID-19 uh, pandemic has only just highlighted that even further. Of course, many of you would know that healthcare is one of Australia's largest and fastest growing industries. And that's uh, driven by our aging population, by the National Disability Insurance Scheme, and particularly felt here in North Queensland is the health profession maldistribution. There might be lots of health professionals working in the large metropolitan areas, meeting the needs of those communities, but it is far fewer in uh, North Queensland uh, and in other regional, rural and remote communities. Australia also relies enormously on graduates from overseas. We import many, many international graduates in a wide variety of health fields every year to fill those gaps. But what we would rather do is train people from our community, in our community, for our community. This slide from uh, the National Skills Commission helps to highlight that healthcare and social assistance is actually going to be the fastest growing uh, industry sector over the next few years till November 2025. So if you're looking for a career in an industry where you will never find yourself out of a job, an industry, uh, a, a career in one of the health industries is the way to go. So at JCU, we spend a lot of time working with and for those vulnerable and underserved communities. We make sure that we are providing fit for purpose health professionals to focus on addressing the needs of those communities. You will be able to hit the ground running in whatever profession you choose. We make sure that you have the skills and the confidence to work anywhere that you need to, and make sure that you have a great curriculum with engaged supervisors to make sure that you are the very best, most work-ready graduate you can possibly be. JCU actually provides uh, healthcare education across an enormous part of Queensland you may not recognise. JCU actually has five rural clinical schools in which I sit. <clears throat> we also have regional training hubs. And actually, JCU provides general practice, subspecialty training to more than 90% of Queensland. Another fantastic statistic that I'm really proud of is that JCU is awarded five stars for full-time employment, for graduate starting salary, and the student-teacher ratio. One of the great things about studying with JCU is that your supervisors, your lecturers, your educators, the doctors you work with know you by name, develop that relationship with you. You are not a number. You are not at the back of the lecture theatre. You can't hide, which might be a bad thing for some people. It means that you get a personalised experience. So when we look at the different uh, education options that we have, the things that we are asked most commonly about is entry into medicine, entry into dentistry, and entry into vet science. All of these degrees require not just a great grade 12 result. In Queensland, that's the ATAR, of course. You also need to write an application to the university about why you would like to study in that course. What makes you the right candidate for JCU to accept to study in that profession? For all of these courses, there are some prerequisite subjects. You need English, math methods, and chemistry, and you need to be successful in all of those at the end of grade 12. But please don't be disheartened if you haven't chosen some of those subjects, because JCU offers you bridging courses in subjects such as maths and chemistry to help fill that gap that you might have at the end of grade 12. So for medicine, for example, you need to have your grade 12 or equivalent mark. You need to have your application that you submit online. And for acceptance into medicine, you also need to be successful in an interview. There are some really important dates for you to pay attention to 
if you want to uh, sign up for one of these application-based courses, you need to have your application in before the 30th of September, and you need to have your QTAC application in before the 30th of September as well. That applies to the domestic applicants. For those students who will be classed as an international student, some of that application uh, time has already passed, but you can start preparing for 2024. So just a little bit more about the Bachelor of Medicine and Surgery. One of the great purposes and visions, as I mentioned earlier, is that JCU's medical school wants to make a difference in rural, regional and remote Australia. We particularly want to make sure that Aboriginals and Torres Strait Islanders in our community are getting the very best healthcare they can. Of course, this applies to all members of our North Queensland community, our tropical North Queensland neighbours, uh, and it's skills that we can translate to our Pacific Island nations as well. Fantastically, through the JCU course, we offer an, a wide breadth of skills so that you will have that capability to work anywhere you want to, particularly because we offer hands-on experience that is unprecedented. It is certainly unmatched in the other medical schools in Australia. In medicine, you are given more than 3,000 hours of placement experience over the six years of your course. So what happens if you go into medicine in North Queensland? So if you are successful with the application to JCU, which is your grade 12 result, your application and your interview, then you graduate as a doctor, possibly from my medical school here in Mackay. Then you can continue your training into the subspecialty of your choice if you are successful in that application too. And you can complete that training here in North Queensland as well. You don't have to go back to a metropolitan centre uh, to do that further training into becoming a surgeon or a radiologist or a paediatrician or a GP like me. The North Queensland Regional Training Hubs will support you to continue your training in your location of choice, wherever that is possible. The way we can support you is through the federally funded North Queensland Regional Training Hub, where we offer training pathway options through 54 medical specialties. I didn't even know so many specialties existed. There are more than 600 accredited training positions across our region, uh, and that's across North Queensland's six health services. Now, for those of you who are interested in dentistry, and we do need more dentists in our community, uh, the JCU Dental School is an enormous facility with state-of-the-art simulation clinics. So students are able to practice on dummies, but also on real live patients in our dental clinics. Over the course of your dental studies, you would experience more than 2,000 hours of hands-on practice and you are being trained alongside and under the guidance of really experienced professionals. You will do that in the large regional centres, but also in our smaller remote communities and regional areas. And as you can see from this table down the bottom, there is always an increasing need for dentists in our communities. Now, Vet Science, another one of those application-based processes uh, programs, uh, has an enormous uh, world-class uh, teaching facility in Townsville, uh, where you get on-campus experience with that vet emergency centre, and there's a huge livestock facility so that you can get that experience with the large animals as well as the small. Particularly important is getting that experience in the hot regions and in the more tropical wet regions, which give a very different vet science experience from what you would get in Southern states. So we've talked about a few things 
And there might be some other things that you need to consider. One question that is commonly asked is, well, do I need to sit a med entry test? Some of you will be looking at or have already sat a UCAT test. That's all well and good, but we actually don't ask you for that from James Cook University. We are looking not just for the brightest of the bright, but also for the people who want to be doctors, who want to be dentists, who fit into that particular profession and can demonstrate that in their application matter. So unfortunately, going through all of that application process does mean that some of you will be unsuccessful and not receive an offer in your first choice career. But please don't be disheartened. There are lots of alternative options to help get you to that final goal or alternative options that you may not have otherwise considered. Some things that you might want to consider studying include biomedical science, clinical science, or med lab science, or allied health fields like occupational therapy and physio, or pharmacy, or midwifery. There's lots of other options. So we might just explore some of those now. The Bachelor of Biomedical Science or of Medical Laboratory Science or of Clinical Science is also offered with James Cook University and will have many similar early subjects as in medicine or dentistry or vet. In the Bachelor of Biomedical Science, you'll gain a thorough understanding of the relationship between science and medicine, and you might find a career in medical research or in the food industry or in pharmaceuticals. It's probably something some of you might like to consider. The Bachelor of Medical Laboratory Science really helps to equip you for a career working in a laboratory, assisting with the diagnosis, treatment and prevention of disease. So that's another great opportunity to consider. And finally, the Bachelor of Clinical Laboratory Science is an incredibly interesting career for which we need a lot more staff. And this might be someone who works within a team in a laboratory or in a hospital, for example, who might be helping carry out testing on patients with ECGs, cardiac stress testing, or sleep studies. There are an enormous range of allied health careers offered through James Cook University, and I'll step you through some of those now. Occupational therapy is probably the great untapped resource that we have as uh, doctors. Occupational therapists provide an enormous amount of support to our patients with a really client-centered career to help people's livelihoods and lives become a little bit more meaningful in the way they can participate. So for example, they might help make splints for um, people who have hand injuries and help with the rehabilitation process there. It's an incredibly rewarding profession and one for which we need a lot more health professionals. Pharmacy is probably a profession that you might have not considered beyond your local chemist shop. Uh, pharmacists have an enormously important role within hospitals, within research facilities, within pharmaceutical companies developing new medications uh, and in other research and testing roles. Pharmacists are incredibly important uh, in our healthcare communities and it might be something for you to consider too. Physiotherapy is always a popular choice amongst school leavers uh, with physios, as many of us know, helping to assist clients get back their mobility and function, particularly after an injury or something like a stroke. Physiotherapy is uh, incredibly important as part of our multidisciplinary team, and we do need more physios in our community. 
A Bachelor of Psychological Science is another great industry to go into. You might want to be a clinical psychologist uh, and offer um, cognitive behavioural therapy, for example, to patients on a day-to-day -day basis. But a psychology degree can be taken further than that. Psychologists are really important in lots of large organisations, uh, particularly in organisational organizational theory and in research. Uh, often there are fantastic roles in human resources departments and in recruiting firms. So psychology might really suit you too. Speech pathology is another allied health field that people often don't know exactly what it means. Speech pathologists are really skilled uh, members of our multidisciplinary team and important in diagnosing uh, lots of disorders, particularly for children with hearing defects, um, in older people who might have communication or swallowing difficulties, for example, after a stroke. The enormous variety of activities that speech pathologists are involved in offers those allied health professionals a really varied and interesting career as well. Sports and exercise science is another field that is becoming increasingly popular. And all of us know that we need to be more mobile um, and less sedentary in our daily lives. And the sports and exercise science students are helping to improve um, mobility in our community, making sure people understand how to improve their overall well-being and can help with the practical skills to get you moving more, particularly after injuries or illnesses. Now, when we talk about nursing and midwifery, it's a no-brainer, isn't it? We all need more nurses and midwives in our communities, and COVID, as I mentioned earlier, has only highlighted that more. Nurses are the backbone of our community in health, uh, playing a significant role in caring for the patient, in communicating between the doctors and the patients and the patient's families. They're not just taking care of the day-to-day -day needs of those patients, but administering medications and incredibly important as part of our multidisciplinary team. If you wanted to study nursing with James Cook University, you can do it on campus in Mackay or in Townsville or in Cairns, and you can also do it online, which is a great uh, opportunity for some people who want to stay closer to home. If you're interested in pursuing nursing and midwifery together, you would have to do that from the Townsville campus. As you can see from this table, the number of nurses we need in our community is skyrocketing and we need more and more in our placements uh, in the next few years. So if you're keen in nursing, please consider JCU as your provider of choice. We also have some postgraduate degrees for anyone online who already has a degree and is considering a different uh, health opportunity. Some of our postgraduate degrees include the Graduate Diploma of Lifestyle Medicine, where you might undertake electives in research or in public health or in business um, to help align with whatever your career goals are. And students who finish this course uh, can apply for the fellowship of the Australasian Society of Lifestyle Medicine, which is one of our newer specialties.
Thank you, Elisa. Um, I just want to touch on the Year 12 student success slides and then we might go into some uh, Q&A if that's okay. So here at JCU, we understand senior secondary school can sometimes feel overwhelming during the last couple of years. And to help reduce some of the stress, we've created our Year 12 student support package. The package provides three different offerings to support you in your transition from high school to university. They are the Early Offer Program, our Guaranteed Admissions and the Adjustment Factors Scheme. Our Early Offer Program is a fantastic opportunity to secure a conditional offer into your dream course before even sitting your exams. If you're in Year 12 and graduating this year, you may be able to secure your future with an early offer. An early offer will empower you to finish Year 12 with confidence, having already secured your post-schooling pathway. Next, with guaranteed admissions, you may have the opportunity to enter your preferred course with just your ATAR alone. The guaranteed admissions plan is open to all domestic and international applicants completing Year 12 in Australia. And finally, the Adjustment Factors Scheme is made up of two parts. The Regional Preference Scheme, which assists students and residents of regional and remote areas of Queensland to gain entry into JCU through an automatic adjustment of an applicant's ATAR. And the Subject Adjustment Scheme, which allows for an automatic adjustment for subjects that require a high level of skill and knowledge and are successfully completed in high school. Once again, this is open to all domestic and international applicants completing Year 12. If you'd like further information and to see if your chosen course is eligible, you can visit the link on the screen. So that brings us now to our Q&A session for the evening, Alyssa. I have a couple here that I'd like to run past you. So first of all, what sort of personality traits are best to have for a career in health? That's an excellent question. Thanks, Beck. And I think one of the fantastic things that I have learned in medicine is that uh, the health profession can take all types of people. There are so many different subspecialties and different branches and different opportunities that you can find the spot where you fit if you just open your eyes to that possibility. So it might be going down an allied health pathway. It might be going into a laboratory. Uh, it might be going into education or it might be into a clinical field as a nurse, as a psychologist, as a doctor, whatever you would like. I think the most important trait that we should all have when we are looking for our career is to be open to the opportunities that are there for us. Try not to be too fixed on what your career pathway looks like and be uh, open to listening to the people around you who might have some great advice or see some traits in you that might help you be suited to a particular spot within the health profession. You need to be a good learner. You need to be motivated to be a, a lifelong learner and you need to have that little bit of inner drive. And I hope many of you would have had that just by finishing grade 12. You do need to be able to work in a team and you do need to be able to communicate really well with your patients, with your colleagues and with those patients' families. And some of those skills you might not have just now, but you might develop through your course. So if you're not 100% sure, you might want to sign up and start a course. And if you think it's not for you, then you might be able to move sideways into one of our different courses that might be better suited to you. Thank you, Elisa. That's some great advice. I've also been asked, does volunteering at a medical facility increase my chances of being successful when I apply to study at JCU? Uh, I think helping, uh, I think volunteering at a health facility really helps you to understand whether that profession is right for you, as well as giving you the opportunity to do something good for your community. So it's not about bumping up your CV, to pad out your CV, to make you look like you're a more appropriate candidate for the course. It's about double checking that you would enjoy that work, that you would fit into that work environment, that the hours might suit you. You want to remember also when you're looking at your career, not just about the label of that career or the title that you might be conferred at the end of that degree. You also want to think about 
how you want to live your life. Do you think you want to work in a shift work environment? Are you happy to be working inside the four walls of a tertiary hospital every day of your life? Or would you be a really great um, independent nurse practitioner who jumps in a four-wheel drive and drives around uh, to cattle properties to do home visits for newborn babies? Thinking about how you want to live your life might be the first question that you need to ask yourself. Um, and of course, volunteering in a health facility, I would say is always a good thing to do just because you are a good human. Thanks, Silly. So there's so much to consider. Now, the second, uh, the next question I have is a little bit of a two-part question um, because I've been asked, can you tell us more about the application process for medicine? And the second part to that is, well, how would I prepare for an interview at JCU? Okay. So the application is a letter that you submit online. And if you go to the James Cook University website, you will find the details to go through that. And our staff here behind the scenes at our webinar tonight will be able to help you with the link for that, I am sure. The application is a great way for you to, uh, to communicate with our university what would make you great in medicine or in vet science or in dentistry, our three application-based courses. So they're really important things for you to consider between now and when that application is due. How do you prepare for an interview? So this is a really tricky question and it's, the answer is not specific to applying for medicine, which is the interview-based course. It's about applying for any job in any profession anywhere. You really want to be able to communicate that you understand what it is like to work in that field or that you are open to learning about what it will be like to learn in that field and demonstrate that you have given it some really careful thought. I don't want people to come into the interview and say, oh, I've wanted to be a doctor since I was eight and that's just what I want to do. That's, that's not enough. I, I want you to be able to explain to me why you wanted to be a doctor since you were eight uh, and some of the things that you might have done to cement that as your professional choice. Uh, with preparing for an interview, it can be helpful to uh, give some thought to some of the other things that you've done throughout school with part-time jobs or sporting participation or other things that might help demonstrate what characteristics or traits you have that would make you great in that career. So give that some thought. You might want to ask your family members over dinner one night what they think it is in you that would make you good in that profession. A lot to think about. Um, I have another question that's come in. Will students of the medical program have practice in various areas and specialties before they graduate? For example, surgical branches, women and children's health, or are the placements mainly focused on general practice? That's an easy one to answer. The first part of the medicine course is uh, what we call the preclinical years, all of the stuff that you need to know before you touch a patient. So how the body works, all the anatomy, an understanding of medications and how they work, um, the ethics of medical practice, um, all of those practical things. When you're in fourth year, you are introduced in small increments into a hospital environment and you spend time in both a private and a public hospital. And you also spend some time in general practices and you also spend some time in rural locations. You do actually spend a little bit of time in placement opportunities right from first year, just for a couple of weeks. So that also happens in a rural area in your second year. When you are in fifth and sixth year, you are in a placement uh, environment for the whole time. You will come into the university area for lectures at some stage, but the rest of your academic year is spent on placement. So that will be in private and public hospitals, as well as in general practices 
and also in rural and remote communities. And you can choose to be in some really small communities and even have the opportunity on electives to practice um, overseas, for example. So when you are in your fifth and sixth year, you will rotate around medical and surgical specialties through obstetrics and gynecology, through pediatrics, through psychiatry, and also through general practice so that you have the widest uh, variety of experience that we can possibly offer you. Sounds like the candidates will be job ready by the time they enter the workforce. Um, Elisa, how do people balance work and personal life in a high pressure career, like a career in health? It is an incredibly challenging profession to manage a work-life balance in. Uh, and certainly uh, I'm no poster child for this. I think all of us have times when we work more than we play, but we do try and make time when we play more than we work. That balance is incredibly important uh, to the leaders in healthcare industries because we value our staff as our greatest asset. Your hospital is not about the bright buildings and the fancy helicopter pad. Uh, and you know how many uh, ambulances are ramped or lined up at the front door. Your hospital is about the people inside it. Just as your general practice is not a fancy building, it is about that beautiful GP who you've been visiting regularly since you were a small person. So finding the balance and protecting uh, our healthcare professionals' work-life balance is incredibly important. Um, most of us, I think, uh, probably try very hard to maintain um, good uh, uh, lifestyle habits. So make sure that we get enough sleep, don't drink too much caffeine, certainly stay away from things that we shouldn't be drinking like alcohol uh, and enjoy a bit of physical activity every day. Those sorts of things are incredibly important and particularly for medical students, good habits that we try and encourage you to get into as a medical student so that you can carry those good habits uh, for your self-care through into your working life. Sounds like it's a balance with healthy body, healthy mind. Um, I've got a, another question here, Elisa. Hi, I'm in year 11 this year and I'm trying to figure out what I want to do once I graduate. I know I'd like to go into the health field, but I'm struggling to decide on what to do. I've done work experience with an OT and found that it was very interesting, but I'm still unsure as there's so many options. Do you have any suggestions of how I can narrow down my search? That is a really tough one, isn't it? when you know that it's something health related, but not quite sure what it will be. I would encourage you to do as much work experience as you can and speak to as many people who work in health as you possibly can. They might be friends or family. They might be the staff at your local GP or your physio practice, wherever you go. That can be really helpful. But even if you're not 100% sure which course to go into and we're getting close to the end of grade 12, don't be afraid to put some options onto your QTAC form in any health field because once you're in university, it is not too difficult to transfer from one course to another. So be brave. If you know it's health and you've done some work in an OT and you quite liked it, why don't you start that course at university? If you're not sure, then you can talk to other people in that university, other students who you're there with, and you will meet so many more people when you're in the university and find some other um, inspiration as well. So feel confident to put something on your QTAC form and the detail will work itself out by the end. Great advice. Uh, another one here I have, would you be able to cover some of the specialties we could do after medicine, particularly is dermatology available? Oh, yes, there's not enough dermatologists in the world. So it is very hard to, uh, to list all of the specialties. I think I was saying in North Queensland, we can uh, cover 54 or was it 64 subspecialties? So we have broad areas of specialty. 
And then we have subspecialties in that and further subspecialties in that. So if you can imagine medicine degree being the trunk of a tree, and it's a really big old tree with lots of branches, that's medicine. So you might finish medicine and want to do children's health. So you might do pediatrics. You might be really interested in pediatric mental health and do psychiatry and subspecialize in children's mental health. You might then look at children's mental health as a pediatric psychiatrist and really like developmental difficulties or ADHD and become the pediatric psychiatrist who only sees ADHD patients. It can become as narrow a focus as you like, or you can keep the focus more broad, like general practice, which I do, where I know a little bit about a lot of things, rather than a lot of things uh, about one particular narrow branch. So we have basically medical specialties and surgical specialties. Within medicine, where we're not cutting, there's no blood and guts, you might become a respiratory physician who's interested in lungs, a cardiologist who's interested in hearts. You might become an endocrinologist who loves hormones, um, which would include diabetes and thyroid disorders. Uh, gosh, the list goes on. You might become a hematologist who's um, interested in blood. You might become an oncologist who manages people's cancers. There are so many different options. Within, uh, oh, and that would include dermatology, uh, particularly as you ask. So you might do your medical degree and graduate from JCU after six years. You would do your uh, intern years within a university setting. And then whilst you are working as a junior doctor in a hospital, you would apply uh, to do your basic physician training. Whilst you are going through that physician training course, you would subspecialize then into dermatology. Once you are a physician, uh, then you would do further study into dermatology just by itself. So whilst that sounds like an enormously long career path, remember that you are working the whole time, you are earning money the whole time, you are trying to achieve that work-life balance the whole time and having the life that you want. Uh, whilst you're continuing to study and health like any other career is a matter of lifelong learning and that learning that you're doing to become a dermatologist becomes part of your day-to-day -day work we are learning on the job it's not dissimilar to becoming an electrician or a plumber we're learning on the job so don't be daunted by what sounds like an enormously long career pathway that's going to take you many many years to get through um, it's varied and it's interesting and you're still meeting lots of people and working in great environments along the way. Fantastic. Um, how does JCU support students who are interested in the rural generalist pathway? So rural generalism is another one of our specialties where doctors um, work predominantly in uh, outer regional or rural or remote communities and develop skills that are particularly important in those very small centres. So that means you are a jack of all trades as a rural generalist and you might have a little subspecialty area that you are really good at. You might be uh, the anaesthetist, if one of um, your local community members needs to have an operation, uh, you might be the, um, the rural generalist with the surgical skills to do that operation, like take out an appendix that's about to burst. Um, you might be the rural generalist who has a subspecialty in obstetrics and gynaecology, so you're going to birth that baby or manage that woman who has an ectopic pregnancy, for example. So through James Cook University, we uh, help to give you an enormous number of um, hours in rural clinical um, uh, placements. And as part of your elective uh, that you undertake in sixth year, you can actually spend a prolonged period of time in one rural area. We have an extended rural placement uh, that you can undertake where you spend almost six months in one of our smaller hospitals. 
which is fantastic because you get to see that small hospital from lots of different angles, not just from a surgical point of view or a, um, a medical point of view, but you might also be there to do some general practice or some psychiatry time. Uh, so you can have that extra uh, rural experience if you would like it. You might go to Cooktown or Longreach or Ingham or uh, Mount Isa or Emerald uh, and you can do that for months and months and months if you would like just to see what it's like. The um, Rural Generalist Training afterwards, uh, JCU helps to support that through our regional training hubs and we in JCU work very closely with the medical education units of our local hospitals and help to make sure that students get into the right pathway that is right for them uh, and to support you uh, even after you've left me people keep coming back and saying hello and asking for advice about which direction they should go into uh, so for people who are interested in rural generalism it's a great course offered by JCU to give you experience before you're a doctor so you can be sure that it's the right pathway for you Fantastic. Now, this one is across all of the health courses, not specific to medicine, but can you speak to the ratio balance between practical classes and theory classes? So every course is a little bit different and every level of that course is a little bit different. Of course, you have more theory uh, in your first couple of years of a course and more practical experience in the later years of your course. So, uh, for example, with pharmacy, which is a four-year course, you get some hands-on experience from first year, more hands-on experience in second year, even more in third year, and your fourth year is mostly out in the community or in hospitals or other practical placement opportunities for your pharmacy degree. So all of those opportunities, all of those courses are a little bit different, unfortunately. But what is consistent with JCU's courses is the proportionately compared to other universities, much higher number of placement hours and the JCU graduates across all the health fields that I've ever been involved with are very much more work ready than their counterparts from other universities. So if you want to feel confident when you're walking walking into your very first workplace for your very first day of paid employment in the career that you've been working hard towards at university. If your university has been JCU, I can assure you, you will not feel hopeless on your first day of work. You will feel like you know what you're doing. You will still be the most junior person in the room, but you will have a fair idea of what to do and how to do it and how to be of service to your colleagues and your patients. And isn't that what we all want on our first day at a new job? And not all of us get it. So to have that is a real privilege, isn't it, Beck? It certainly is. Um, Alyssa, I don't, this is a little bit, this is in dentistry. So I, I wondered if you are able to give a little bit of clarity on the dentistry course and the type of opportunities that students have on placement. Mm -hmm. Sorry, my lights keep turning off. So for dentistry, uh, the big dental school is uh, centred in Cairns so that you can get a lot of practical hands-on experience, but not on patients yet, so that you are well-practised on the models before you actually go into a live person's mouth, which is very important. As someone who is not very confident going into the dentist, I really want someone to feel confident with that drill when they're coming towards me. Uh, the practical hours toward the end of your dental course are enormous. Uh, and those dental students go across the whole of North Queensland to have their placement opportunity. For example, the dental students come down here to the Mackay Hospital Dental Facility and work alongside being supervised by the really experienced clinicians that we have here. So the JCU students are very well trained by the time they graduate. And I am very proud to say, go back into their local communities like we have here in Mackay. 
Fantastic. Now, I think we might round it out on this last um, question. But if you're a high school student and you've tuned into the webinar this evening and you're thinking about a career in health, would you recommend the Heroes in Health program that JCU currently runs? The Heroes in Health program does help to give you a bit of a taste of what life is like in a hospital. It uh, is a great opportunity to meet health professionals where you can ask some of those questions that have been raised here tonight from someone else. You might go in and say, oh, I've done some occupational therapy experience. What do you think I should go and do next? The other great opportunity is to make those connections with people who might be able to offer you a work experience placement. And Heroes in Health helps to give you a bit of an idea of what life is like living and breathing that profession, which is hard to assess from the outside. Any opportunity that you have to get some experience in that field before you undertake your course cannot be a waste of your experience. It's only a couple of days out of your life. Take on that, um, that opportunity with gusto. Uh, throw yourself into it. Ask as many questions of as many people as you can. There is never a silly question and we do not tire of answering the questions of young people who are you know, just wanting to find their way in the world. Oh, thank you for that. And I think for anybody that's listening right now and they are interested in the Heroes in Health program, they can access further information on the JCU website and probably liaise with their school about that as well. Yeah. So on that note, I'd really like to thank everybody for attending this evening, particularly you, Elisa. Um, your wealth of knowledge, I'm sure, has answered a lot of questions this evening and we really value the hour that you've given us out of your time. I would ask the audience to complete our post survey tonight. So there will be a link in the browser after the webinar concludes. And before you leave this evening, just so that you know, um, in upcoming events, we have the Townsville Career Expo very soon on the 31st of July. We have the Heroes in Sport program on the 7th and 8th of August. The Cairns Career Expo, for those of you who are further north, on the 24th of August. Heroes in Business on the 11th of September. And then for anybody wanting to join us for a virtual open day on the 14th of September, get a feel for what life is like at JCU. You can even book in a one-on-one -on -one uh, conversation with some of our future student advisors. If you've enjoyed this evening, we also have some other webinars coming up that will help you, particularly if you are in year 12. The next one is the QTAC Information Night, and that's the 27th of July. We have Unmasking the ATAR System, which is on the 31st of August. People that are looking to get into university through a pathway course can learn more on the 14th of September. And then we have a year 12 webinar on the 12th of October, where we traditionally have current JCU students who speak to students about the university experience, their courses, those types of things. So we hope that you're able to join us for some of those. Thank you again and good night.